Hey, guess what? It's time for VoiceOver Body Shop. And our guest tonight is the lovely Christina Castaneda, who's going to talk to us about audio drama. Hi, Christina. Hello, fellas. Great to have you with us. We're going to talk about audio drama, and this is a great way for voice actors to do more voice acting. All right. George is in front of all my radios. Boom, check it out. We're in the same space. <laughs> yeah, for if once. I reach my arm far enough. Oh, oh yeah, there it is. It's right there. <laughs> All righty. If you've got questions for Christina or for George and I about tech, throw it in the chat room. Jeff Holman is in there, and we will get those questions to her. And it's time to roll. Time for VoiceOver Body Shop right now. From the outer reaches, they came. Bearing the knowledge of what it takes to properly record your voiceover audio. And together, from the center of the VO universe, they bring it to you now. George Whittem, the engineer to the VO stars. A Virginia Tech grad with the skills to build, set up, and maintain the professional VO studios of the biggest names in VO today. And you, Dan Leonard, the voiceover home studio master. A professional voice talent with the knowledge and experience to help you create a professional sounding home VO studio. And each week, they allow you into their world, bringing you talks with the biggest names in the voiceover world today, letting you ask your questions, and giving you the latest information to make the most of your voiceover business. Welcome to VoiceOver Body Shop. VoiceOver Body Shop is brought to you by VoiceOverEssentials.com, home of Harlan Hogan Signature Products. Source Elements, remote studio connections for everyone. VoiceActorWebsites.com, where your VO website isn't a pain in the butt. VOHeroes.com, become a hero to your clients with award-winning voiceover training. JMC Demos, when quality matters. And VoiceOver Extra, your daily resource for VO success. And now, live to drive. From their super secret clubhouse and studio in Sherman Oaks, California, here are the guys. Well, hello there. I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver Body Shop or VO BS. In sync. In sync. We're yeah, in the sync because we're in the same room, which <laughs> helps a whole lot when yeah. you have the inner, you know, the internet interfering with all that. <laughs> but anyway, uh, welcome to our show. We're here to talk about voiceover, and we've got some interesting stuff to talk about tonight. An interesting weekend I had because I got to. We finally got invited to go to. A friend's house in Oxnard. You're invited to go play at a friend's house? We were invited to go play at a friend's house. Now, oh, here's the nice. thing. You know, I had this sudden weird observation that, you know, there are people, you know, you're hanging out with people who look like your parents because you forget that you're as old as they are. <laughs> yeah. It's like, well, this is this is weird. <laughs> you know, and he's mixing up martinis. I'm like, wow. Well, it's, it's My dad martini. used to, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah it's it's fun to go hang out at a friend's beach house been, yes been waiting for seven years to do that here in la and finally we're we, trying to meet new friends with beach houses so <laughs> yeah, we're, that's, we're working the, it. that's the that's the thing you should we're be working doing. it anyway uh we're going to talk about audio drama tonight and to help us with that is somebody who does an awful lot of this uh christina castaneda is a writer and producer of the Savvy Creative Podcast, which features award-winning audio fiction with magic, romance, and dark thrillers, fully produced by indie writers and creative talent. They also celebrate indie authors, screenwriters, playwrights, and creatives who produce and publish their stories. We're going to talk about the scope of what's available out there and how you, voice actor po people, uh, want to try it yourself or get involved. So let's welcome... Christina Castaneda. Hi there. Welcome to VoiceOver Body Shop. Hello, fellas. Thank you for having me. It's our <laughs> pleasure. Great have, having you. Now, now I'll, I'll, I'll leave this off by saying you found me on LinkedIn. Not, not a place that I hang out a whole lot, but there was a, an ad there, and you and I, uh, you hired me to do one of, your, one of your dramas, which was a lot of fun. Yeah, well, technically, you found me. 
I put out okay. the ad and you applied to me. Actually, okay. no, it's not All a right. con- it's not a contest, I but I did. Say, I was shocked <laughs> to hear that Dan was doing advertising and doing it on LinkedIn. <laughs> LinkedIn so I was like, oh, this is new. No, yeah, I put great. out ads to my followers. I just put out now casting, put out a form, then put out applications on LinkedIn, which I rarely ever go on LinkedIn because I feel like it's like Facebook, but with resumes. So I just like, <laughs> stay away. And uh, yeah, and I got a lot of applications LinkedIn. I got 50 and then I got a lot on Instagram as well. And I just wanted someone with experience with a wide range and uh, we were on a crunch and on a deadline. And Dan, you replied within minutes. <laughs> like, I was really shocked. And yeah, we just started working together. Yeah, just happened to be there. And timing <laughs> is everything. Yes. You know, yes. And, when, and as we say, when the opportunity presents itself, you got to deliver. And that's the most important Luck thing. Luck favors the prepared. And absolutely. Uh, so, you know, what, let's talk about audio drama. This thing has been around for a long time. I mean, before television, I mean, I, I, let's go back. It goes around to the campfire, uh, you know, where you've got storytelling and, you know, and somebody's going to be, and he came down the path. <laughs> no, anyway, uh, but it's a little bit different now on the internet, isn't it? And uh, so we get the opportunity to do what was used to be this great art form on the radio. And, uh, you know, what got you into it? So I had been in podcasting for years, not just for my own podcast, but professionally as well. I did three live three live podcasts a week for Beachbody when I was working in the fitness business. Yeah, two in English, one in Spanish. And it went on every week and we did it for two years uh, every Monday and it was exhausting. And it was all like personal development interview style. And although it was fun and it gave me a good background in broadcasting, it just wasn't, eh, it just wasn't enough for me. And I was a writer at the time. I was a struggling novelist who just like couldn't put a novel together or just like it could never get through the second or third draft. And I wasn't being taken seriously as a writer at that point. Like I just couldn't get into the writer's groups or anything. And so... Um, During the pandemic, I started reading my stories on my podcast, just little short stories, little narrations. And then I started posting videos as well. And I just, my following just started to grow and my downloads started to grow. And then I met Chris Gregory of the Alternative Stories podcast, Alternative Stories and Fake Realities podcast. And he is a major producer of audio drama on his own indie channel in the UK. And he asked me to do voice work. And I thought, I've always been behind the mic or behind the camera. Why would I be the talent? I'm just having fun here. And I did my first voiceover with his uh, podcast that he did. And it was the very beginning of the shutdown, I'd say April 2020. And he asked me to do more. He asked to work with me and for me to write a piece for him. And we've been... I actually learned a lot from him. And the UK is where a lot of this is so popular. Like they have the archers, they have like a lot of network audio dramas. And, you know, in the US, like you said, it's old school. There was the shadow and Dick Tracy and like the very, very like mystery noir uh, shows. Yeah. But the more I started working with Chris and I started following his stories, I realized that, oh my God, what what have I been missing my whole life? Like, this is the form of podcasting I want to do. So I started getting involved with more groups. I realized that horror writers, uh, fantasy, sci-fi are super big into this genre, which makes sense because you can do like the, you know, pew pew and monster sounds and stuff. You can do so much with it um, just with a simple script. And from that point on, I decided to just start reading my writing again on the podcast. And this time during the shutdown, you know, when we were in LA, it was when the riots were happening and it was so close to my home. And I could hear like, cause it was, there was stuff happening on Venice Boulevard. So I could hear things going on. And I just started writing like this really dark story. (laughs) And cause that's just what we were all feeling. We were all feeling the anxiety when it first happened. And then the story just evolved into like this dystopian type of story. And then I needed an actor to come in and then I needed a director to come in because I thought, oh, I'm not going to do a male voice. I can't, I don't think I could pull that off. And plus I need help. Like I knew I wanted to grow it at that point. So a friend of mine who's a director, a filmmaker came in and then another friend of mine um, started helping me as well. And then Chris Gregory with his help 
um, it started growing the fans, our fans, I thought that they would be like put off because I was doing interview style shows, but it wasn't, they actually really liked it. They were excited about it. We started hyping it up on social. I started growing, uh, the downloads were actually double than what we were getting before. And I thought, oh my God, I have to like continue this. And I finally got back into writing and loving my writing again. It wasn't like a book where I wanted to throw my computer at the wall <laughs> um, and where like the editing process was so brutal when you edit a novel. But when you edit a script, it's fast, you know, like notes need to come in fast and things need to get out fast. Right. You know, like I have to send sides to a, another actor right now. And I'm just like, ah, you know, like which scene am I going to choose? How am I going to, pro you know, what, what am I going to do? And uh, it's it's but it. it it's that part of that run fast and break things kind of uh, creative development that I really like being a part of just from my background in tech. So I just thought, wow, this is such a fit. I get to do two things I love, writing and podcasting. I get to be on the production side of things, which I already had that background in from working uh, in the fitness industry and doing all those productions. And it was just uh, when Chris actually introduced me to so many cool people. And then I started joining all the groups and started you know, finding the fans. And I was like, this is a really loving community. Like this is a really fun community. And they are just so creative and expressive. They take chances, you know, they really push the limits differently that you can't do in Hollywood or you can't do on a major network. And they are like all backgrounds, all ages, all races. It's really cool. And I re also realized that I said, okay, how many are for Latinos? You know, how many are for the Latino audience? Because they have telenovela, radio novelas, but it's pure Spanish or like, you know, it's, it's, it's mm. super dramatic, like a, like a regular telenovela. Right. And then I just thought, you know, um, we're not taking advantage enough of this. So why don't I create something for us? Because I don't see enough of it right now. And I started finding more actors. I started finding more talent. And it's just growing from there. And now people are asking me, hey, what are you doing? Because for a filmmaker, things are so tough for them to get their stuff made versus an audio drama. You know, it does cost money, but it doesn't cost as much as you think. And if you manage it well, and if you manage your time well, like you can still make something pretty good or you can make a few episodes. You can make something an hour long, which I don't recommend. We did that and that was a disaster, but you can make something 15 minutes long. <laughs> yeah, an hour long, heavy file with sound effects and all these different takes. Oh my God, like we were in tears at that one. And I said, I will never write a long script again. Like 15 pages well, it, is my cutoff. For long now. is like what you think of audiobooks as long. And clearly like there's this dividing line between audiobooks and audio drama we mentioned it you mentioned it a little bit ago which was you no longer having a man kind of doing a lady's voice or throwing to be a woman or as vice versa that just doesn't in audio drama realism yeah you know is, it's is immersive the, yeah it's it's immersive it, with an audiobook you, it's one voice and it's continuous and you kind of get lost in the story it's a different experience this this is a whole different thing, but you can enjoy them both equally. That's what's interesting about it. Yeah, and there's nothing better than when a listener either DMs you or writes in and says, oh my God, I cried at my desk at work. I felt like crying or I laughed out loud um, or I was <laughs> driving and it totally was scared. Like I had one episode where there's a crash at the end and they're like, I was not expecting that or killing a <laughs> rattlesnake. And they're like, oh my <laughs> God. And I love that. I love being able to make people jump and react. I mean, that's kind of what we do as writers. We kind of haha, love to love to torture you just just a bit you know yeah. so <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and and george brings up a good point this is you know we have a lot of people a lot of our viewers who are audiobook narrators this is this would be a whole new way for them to you know to be even more creative and be part of a part of an ensemble as opposed to just you know making yourself the ensemble which we know some people who are very very good at that but i would think that they would also be mm. fabulous at doing this type of work because this is when, you know, if I'm doing an audio book, it's like, you know, it would be a lot more fun if there was music, if there were sound effects, you know, the more, more of the kind of stuff that, you know, that I'm used to doing as a producer. I know, so. audio book seems kind of restrictive, doesn't it? it when you have yeah. all that production background. Yeah. Yeah. When I was uh, doing novels, I thought, oh, I want to add this like music into it. How could I let the reader hear it? And then when I came into audio drama, I was like, oh, duh, this is like I was meant to do this. Mm -hmm. um, but with uh, audiobooks, you know, it's also the 
um, like the the dialogue tags, like he said, she said, I said, you know, because you're still like narrating it. And it, mm. like to me, it was always hard to read things like that as well. So because I've, I've done some narration, too, as well um, for as part of my voiceover journey. And that was really a, a huge change for me. And I said, I'm going back to reading scripts. I don't think I could narrate. <laughs> but the great thing is that we react to each other. And you never know what the actor brings. And that's what's really fun. When we were doing The Last Magician, the actor who played the magician, the bad magician, um, he just delivered something that I was not expecting. And he just made his character so sleazy and despicable, which was amazing. And we were reacting to it. And it was actually one of our best scenes, that, I, at least in my opinion. And we used it to promote on social later. So it was, I, I actually just really love that, that part of the, that creative process yeah you discover yeah. so much yeah yeah it's it's a lot of fun uh just doing it because you know a lot of us came out of theater and it's like well i get to do it again and but all i need is my microphone and the right room as george and i will tell you uh once again we'll remind you if you're just joining us our guest is christina castaneda she is a writer and producer of audio drama and has a webcast I'm sorry, a podcast called The Savvy Creative. And uh, check it out. It'd be a lot of fun. I was going to say, you have a good sounding environment, actually. Like, you're using a condenser mic, clearly. Yes, yes, and I not am. everybody can get a good sound out of a condenser mic unless they've spent some effort well, dealing my... with their space. So what are you doing over there? My daughter, um, is a, she just finished L.A. Film School. Oh. Uh, and she, in audio engineering. And I can't tell you how many oh, wow. times she scolds me like, mom, oh, you're lucky. She goes, mom, did you learn your lesson about echo? I was like, yeah, that crumple pop app is awesome. And she goes, no, mom, not the lesson. You need to adjust your mic. You need to do this. All and right. she scolds me all the time because she knows that if I don't get, get it right, then she's going to have to help me fix it. Just like, you know, when you, I feel like that parent who's always like kids, I need your help with this. So she actually told me, you know, how to put a limiter on, how to, how to, she, she actually bought me a podcast kit for Christmas because she was so sick of me messing up. <laughs> <Wow. laughs> and she's like, here, mom, don't mess up this time. And she, she's into music, but she actually was the first sound designer that we had. I mean, for the sake of our relationship, she's not my sound designer anymore. But the fact that the episode that she worked yeah. on was the one that got the award, it was a good for her portfolio. And uh, it actually helped her get into the music industry business. But she's the one that helped me set mm. up. And then, of course, my son, he's also a gamer YouTuber. So he helped me with a lot of equipment as well. Wow. Um, so, yeah. And, and I say so you can do you chores. Kids. <laughs> you that's can do you chores or you can help my podcast. You need that, consultants can, in the house. Yeah, yeah. That's why I tell my kids. You can do chores or you can help mama with her podcast. And so they're like, oh, how bad is it, mom? <laughs> Maybe <laughs> we'll do dishes. So. Oh, that's funny. Yeah, really. Yeah. It could work out both ways. It's a win-win for you. Exactly. <laughs> they either want to help you with a podcast or they've got to do I'm a single mom dishes. too. So a single mom's <laughs> got to make it work. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> If you've got a question for Christina about audio drama and the stuff that we're talking about tonight, uh, throw it in the chat room. Jeff Holman is sitting in there writing it down personally on a pad and then transferring it to... <laughs> into to, calligraphy. Into calligraphy. And that, then that, scanning the calligraphy. Yeah, and turning okay. it into cuneiform. And yeah. then, you know... That's then, so fancy. I know. It, well, we're a very sophisticated <laughs> outfit. What can I say? <laughs> but if you've got a question, throw it in there right now. We'll get to, into it in the uh, next segment. Uh Who's listening to this stuff? I mean, you must be talking to your fans and, and what are they telling you and who are they? You know, I'm shocked that it's the fans are so much younger. I thought like, what would they want with a 41 year old, <laughs> you know, like who likes to play around with magic? But you got to remember the young, the generation, the millennials and Gen Zers, you know, they grew up with Harry Potter. The Gen Zers absolutely love. Uh, they're the ones that you definitely can probably get some good recruiting if you want staff or if you want people to um, get on board with your project because they grew up with YouTube. YouTubers are also doing this as well. Like, you know, cause YouTubers, are they gonna go into film? They probably could because they got the cameras and they got the audience, but some of them did go into audio drama like Markiplier, you know, if you watch, if your kids watch YouTube, you've probably seen him obnoxiously gaming. Um, but he has yeah. his own uh, uh, network audio drama as well. So mm. a lot of uh, the Gen Zers are going into this. So I would, you know, don't 
rule them out because they are definitely listening to it. Um, gamers also, and gamers are all ages too. Um, and I'm not just talking video gamers. I'm talking like the people who play Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah, the RPG people. Yes, yeah. RPG people love audio dramas. And when I go to these watering holes, what I like to call them like Discord or the Facebook groups where they're hanging out because that's where I... I get a lot of tips on how to do sound effects and a lot of tips on like when I mess up and I have a question, <laughs> um, mm -hmm. where to find actors. Um, that's where I meet a lot of fans who are just like super hardcore and they love the monsters and you know, they, some of them are game masters and dungeon masters. Like <laughs> I didn't even really know what all that was. Um, but that's where like a lot of the hardcore fans are. So you got to look in those worlds, especially if you're going to do a fantasy or a monster based horror type of, script like go to those go find the gamers because they will be some of your big fans and when i was when i was younger <laughs> my sister was a trekkie like a hardcore trekkie and i would go to conventions with her and you know my mom like made her like a little star trek uniform because my mom was a really good seamstress and i would just walk around and it was my first time seeing a convention where people were super hardcore into something and i just thought mm. i hope one day that I can write something or put something together that would make people like literally dress up to the T, um, talk about hmm. characters with so much detail to the fact where like, I don't even know how the authors keep track of it. Now I have my own system to keep track of the world building, but the way that they were so obsessed and like they, it's almost like they felt like these characters were real. I thought I want to be able to create that one day. And you got to look for, people uh stories that have fans like that because most likely they're going to be able to uh you know like join into your story so like using things like magic and fantasy and mythical creatures and you know heroes superheroes you know all that stuff using those kind of uh tropes will will help you build that so how, how are you finding your talent these days talent? <laughs> besides, LinkedIn, besides, besides linkedin besides linkedin yeah um well Definitely, this is LA. I mean, if you know your filmmaker, you know your director, they're usually going to connect you. And what I say is like, look, I need someone I can work with. I need someone who's good on a long day. I need someone who's actually going to read the script before they show up. I want a native Spanish speaker. Please don't be someone who's just going to come in and just say they're going to do an accent. Like, I want you to be an actual native Spanish speaker. Um, no Peggy Hill high school Spanish, please. <laughs> I want, uh, you know, I was looking for... I was looking for, you have no idea how much that happens. <laughs> I, I, was, I was looking for a comedian. So I would go and network with as many comedians because uh, a lot of comedians podcast. So I was able to find some in the podcasting world. Um, so, and you just want to make sure that their voice is different from the other main characters because that's the hardest part. They mm. can be super, super qualified, but if their voice is too similar, it's not going to work or unless they could do, you know, impersonations or something then it might work, but you have to be super flexible there. Um, so I use my network of connections first, and then I, and it's really hard to find people who are available at the time that you want to shoot and record. So there's also that. And um, finding a Spanish speaking actor, I think was probably really, really tough because I wanted to find somebody that was like local to LA and all that stuff. And um, so I, I think it's also a matter of being flexible as well, because <laughs> you don't know the work ethic is most important to me. Like, are you going to show up? Are you going to have a good attitude? Um, or am I going to have to send you home cause, and just pay you out for the day, which has definitely happened before. So, mm. and yeah, I'm not, <laughs> I'm very quick to do that as well. So it, I think, um, and also being, uh, if you, when people say that, like, they've heard my podcast before or they follow me on social media already and they're already engaging and they're already a fan of our work, then I am a little bit more likely to listen to their reel or to just hear them out a little bit or give them a, you know, put them to the front of the line um, when I'm looking through reels as well. And also, uh, I mean, there's so many things I look for. Do they have good branding on their site? Do they have good, are things broken on their, links broken on their site? Um, is what they do clear, what they offer clear? And uh, are their reels playing? Because I've even been on sites where I couldn't even access someone's reel. And that was a, you know, that's a problem as well. So um, I want to make sure like all deliverables are tight and wrapped and, <laughs> and good have too. Have your act well. together, everybody. Right. Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, also, you know, the, when people are very responsive, that's also a good sign as well. So those, those would probably be 
the most. And oh, I will I will peep your socials too as well. <laughs> I'm going to look at how you answer comments. I'm going to look at if you have legit fans. I'm going to look at if you um, have haters, which wouldn't even wouldn't even scare me. I actually think that's you might be saying something or you might be saying your opinions, which is also, um, you know, I, I it wouldn't be a deal breaker for me if you had some haters in the comments or anything. But um, <laughs> I do look at how you interact with fans because most likely my fans are going to go over to you and interact with you. So I want to make sure that, you know, you're answering comments or you don't have a lot of bots and spam and stuff. You know, I always, I do check that as well. So. Interesting to know. <laughs> Once yeah. again, if you've got a question for Christina about audio drama and how to produce this stuff, throw it in the chat room. We will get to it in just a little bit. Uh, one of the most important things new indie creators should know if they want to create their own audio drama. I mean, you've got, here's a fabulous opportunity for voice actors, people, you know, that George and I know who actually know how to hit record and make it sound like, you know, the way it's supposed to sound. Uh, what, what do people need to know? to to get this going aside from the audio stuff aside from the audio yeah. um how to find fans how um how to make the how so when you're doing a film and this was also very um a very interesting thing that i noticed with the filmmakers and the audio drama you know you look at a script and you're you're kind of hearing it not really seeing it. You know what I mean? Like you have to, instead of camera angles, you're looking at sound effects to replace camera angles and things like that. So right. you, you kind of have to train your mind and train your ears a little bit differently. It's really, it's really a crazy thing. Your ears will even hallucinate sound effects <laughs> for you, but a good way to get started, honestly, it's your, um, you gotta know, you gotta have that rock star team. And some people like friends could join you, like my close friend, who's the director, she's the one that helped me out and she joined me. And you got to really, really be open to tightening up that story. And you got to really, really super believe in your story because there are so many moments when you're putting that story together and the actor's bringing something different. If you're working with the director, they're going to bring something different. The sound effects may not work the way you planned. It's like baking a cake, you know, it may come out <laughs> the way you want or it may not. And um, you kind of have to be able to almost lead yourself through this process because there's so many moments of imposter syndrome. There's so many moments mm. of like, this is not going to work. This is not going to work. And you're freaking out. Right, it's, it, it always happens right before you hit publish too. <laughs> you're just <laughs> no. like, uh, it doesn't sound the way I want. I want to change this. And you're oh, like, no, man. I have to get the episode out. But you're, you're really struggling a lot in your mind um, if you're doing this all yourself. So you really got to get a good team of people you can trust, of people who tell you the truth and just say, like, look, there's a big plot hole here. You really got to fix that. Um, or that just does not sound. It sounds like nails on a chalkboard does not sound <laughs> cool at all. Right. right. Um, and you have to you have to really um, have that moving forward. And then it doesn't take a lot to produce it. Um, it it's actually. Uh, you know, if you're overwhelmed by like how much it's going to cost to pay the actors, pay this, you can negotiate, you can talk to people, um, you can figure out some, you can always work things out. Um, if you really believe in your story and you really want to get it out with me, I knew the last magician, I knew Venice magic shop was going to be great. That's actually like one of my most favorite things I've done. Um, and I knew like, no matter what I was going to be able to make this, I was going to find a way I was going to find a way to pay everybody and to get the marketing out there, everything. Um, you would think that people would just be on board to produce your story. Like, isn't it great? Like, you know, a magic shop on the boardwalk and a magical talking cat. Who wouldn't love that, right? <laughs> yeah. Not, no, not a lot yeah. of people did like it. You know, they turned me down a lot. And it's, you know, sometimes you need more than money. You need like a really clear pitch. You need a really clear way of saying, hey, actors, join me on this. This would be fun. Um, like, do you really see this character? Do you really believe in the character? So you have to... You have to have all that very clear um, before you start reaching out to people as well, because that was a lesson I learned too, was like, oh, magical talking cat, not so interesting. Okay, you know, <laughs> all right. Well. You, have to have, you have to have a little bit of a thick skin. You know? Right, yeah. Well, I mean, just like any business, but um, you like that, that was a hard lesson for me that I, it, was, it was tough to get people on board. It was harder than it was the first time. And I wasn't anticipating that as much. Um, so I was like, okay, I need to build a strong team and I need to have a better plan. I need to have more assets ready, like sending the scripts and sending character sketches and everything, like everything had to be solid. 
and sent out and just, you know, the way I presented it had to be strong if I were, to, if I was going to get actors and uh, the team together. Yeah. yeah. Having a yeah. team is really important. I mean, that, you know, we've learned that in video production. You can't do it yourself. I mean, you, you got to have an audio person. You got to have somebody who knows, understands cinematography, somebody who knows lighting and scripting and the continuity and all those things. Otherwise, you're doing that all yourself and it takes 10 times as long and generally isn't as good. So <laughs> in, important, important to, to mention. Once again, if you've got a question for Christina Castaneda about uh, audio drama and how you can get involved in it and what's involved, uh, throw it in the chat room and we'll get to her in those questions just a little bit. So we were talking a little bit earlier about, about tech, but again, not about audio tech, but what are some of the things that people need to understand in order to get this product out there? Uh, product out there on... Anywhere. Platforms or yeah, anywhere? Yeah, on platforms, yeah. Um, well, I mean, getting it out there, like the, the best thing is like audio is definitely a lot more visual. If you want to go network, you have the option to try to pitch to the network like Gimlet on Spotify or Q Code Media or Wondery or all those places because, you know, like some of the big Hulu and Apple TV shows that you're seeing started off as audio drama podcasts or narrative podcasts as well. Um, also, I would be... Um, I, I know I mentioned gaming earlier, like you want to look for the gamers, um, but you would definitely also want to be looking out for the future as far as, you know, bringing your audio drama to VR, you know, bringing your sound design skills to VR, mm -hmm. um, to the metaverse, um, things like that, because a lot of our content consumption is moving in that direction. And soon, like, you know, all of us just doing a podcast right here, we're going to be little avatars, <laughs> you know, talking and everybody who is watching us, their little avatars are going to be in our audience. You know, comedians are already doing that in the sandbox or wherever they're, you know, hosting their metaverse. So that's definitely where it's headed. So if you can start learning mm -hmm. that technology now, or you can just even go play in the sandbox for free for a little bit, create an avatar, you know, if you want and start getting into that world, you will see that, you know, not only that's where we're headed, you can probably, it's going to help you stay a little bit more relevant than just, you know, here's another episode, download it, you know, here's another film in a film festival, right? <laughs> if people see you regularly in the metaverse where they can interact with you, um, it's going to be a way for you to keep a show going, build your fans. And also it's, it's cool that you can be able to just interact with them. They can buy, you know, we have magic in our episodes, right? They can game and buy one of our magic products and keep gaming that way. So there's a whole future that your stories and your characters can live in this digital space. And it's so fascinating. Like it's just really, really going to keep growing. So I would definitely go for the next step beyond pass, uh, podcasting, AR, VR, metaverse. Yeah. Yeah. You, I just, be, before we go, you said, you said yeah. sandbox. <laughs> you, you go, go and play. That means a lot of things. <laughs> but is there a sandbox that you think of when you say the word sandbox? What do you? Sandbox think is uh, digital land. It's land in the metaverse. It's a gaming platform. So um, Snoop Dogg has his own land there, where like he sells like his little doggy metaverse avatars. And you know, yeah, wow. and yeah. his music blast there. You know, I, it's, helps having it's kids pretty cool. Possibly grandkids too. I'm sure. Because it keeps you wanting to be in, in, engaged with that, those yeah. generations. Well, if I if my son d didn't game so much, like I wouldn't have known a lot about this. And if mm -hmm. you if anyone has kids, they know about Minecraft and oh my god, you Roblox. know about Minecraft. Yes, yeah, Roblox. You know all of that. So why not get into that? It's because a lot of people like it's just gonna keep going up. So you definitely want to be involved at, and i've always been a geek for techie stuff like this so um and i just think well podcasting it's constantly constantly growing there's over what eight hundred thousand podcasts on apple so and growing <laughs> yeah and more well, a lot of them are inactive though but you know yeah. they're they're mm -hmm. still it's still really hard to keep growing there yeah. what's next so and how can i make these characters live without putting them on tv or selling it to netflix and then it just goes down a abyss of you know yeah, look at the savings on makeup alone. Anyway, <laughs> we're talking with Christina yeah. Castaneda, and we're talking about audio drama. And again, you got a question, throw it in the chat room. But we're going to take a break right now, and we'll be right back with more of Christina and VoiceOver Body Shop right after these messages. <laughs> 
Well, hello there. I bet you weren't expecting to hear some big-voiced announcer guy on your new orientation training for Snapchat, were you? This is Virgin Radio. Well, okay, we're not that innocent. There's jeans for wearing and there's jeans for working. Dickies, because I ain't here to look pretty. She's a champion of progressive values, a leader for California, and a voice for America. It's smart. It's a phone. It's a smartphone. But it's so much more. It's a, the files are ready. Don't forget to pick up the eggs. What time is hockey practice? Check out this song. It's the end of the road for Rick. Oh, it's just you and me, Rick. When hope is lost. The I-8 from BMW. Who said saving the planet couldn't be stylish? Hey, it's J. Michael Collins. Bet you think I'm going to try and sell you a demo now, huh? I think they speak for themselves. But I will give you my email. It's jmichael at jmcvoiceover.com. Now, if Dan will stop waxing his mustache for a minute, we'll get back to the show. And now a word from Harlan Hogan and voiceoveressentials.com. Has this ever happened to you? Embarrassing. The washers on these booms? Eh, they're not so great at holding up your expensive microphone. And here's the answer. The adjustable boom stop is great. Easy to attach and works like a charm. No more droopy mic. It's simple, ingenious, and infinitely adjustable. The padded non-slip pouch fits almost any size boom arm. Unique double-loop webbing system for unlimited angle of the downstrap. Works with tripod and solid round bases. Light gray webbing lets you mark and repeat stand settings for each performer. It's three ounces of protection for your expensive microphone with free standard shipping in the continental U.S. Hold up your mic with the ABS Adjustable Boom Stop. Hey there, I'm David H. Lawrence, the 17th, and with my company, VO Heroes, and my team of coaches and my community of voiceover talent, we guide voiceover actors along their journey. And you may be watching VOBS here, uh, and not nearly as far along as many of the other people who are watching. You may not even have started yet. And we actually specialize in helping you do just that. So if you're watching all the stuff going on here on VOBS and going, I have no idea what they're talking about. I don't know, but I really want to do this. I'd really like to help you. Please go to VOHeroes.com slash start. That's VOHeroes.com slash start. And you can take our Getting Started in VoiceOver class, which tells you everything you need to get started as a voice talent. And I'd love to hold your hand along the way and help you with that journey. Again, voheroes.com slash start. That's voheroes.com slash start. This is the Latin lover narrator from Jane the Virgin, Anthony Mendez, and you're enjoying Dan and George on The Voice of Our Body Shop. And we're back with Christina Castaneda, and we're talking about audio drama. Not an area that, you know, we really talk a lot about, George. I mean, no, no, we haven't. It's, this, is, this is something completely new. We've always yeah, been talking to true. people about you know, doing commercials and audiobooks and e-learning. Animation. Animation, all this stuff. This is an, another area that clearly is growing. So we're, mm -hmm. we're, we're really and thrilled the, to have it. Based on the volume of questions we're getting, that obviously is true. Right. we got a lot of questions. I'll let you take the first one. All right, let's <laughs> dig in. Uh, the first one in the queue comes from Daryl Nobles, and he says, Greetings all. Question for Christina. I love audio drama. Um, where to get coaching? Or, uh, for OTR, for the OTR resurgence. I think it means on the radio. I guess that's what that stands or for. Or on the road, depending on. So I got to admit, I'm completely self-taught when it comes to the uh, all of this. <laughs> I'm pretty much running and doing this on my own and just pretty much learning acting from my director's notes and then trying online stuff like just to learn. Um, yeah. And producing, I had that produce, uh, production uh experience from working actually like those long hours before um where can you get coaching honestly i would just say um there's so many discord and facebook groups there's a really great discord group run by julie hoverson um they do table reads two times a week so i do i just go just to practice 
And I swear there's one guy who sounds just like Scooby-Doo. He like sounds, his voice is so good and he does all these mm-hmm. like things. And I'm like, wow, people can do like, it's really like, wow, people can do this. Um, and then Sarah Golding, um, she's in the UK. She runs also, um, uh, she, she once in a while, her and I forget what the other guy's name is, but they, they host uh, table reads as well. So just join an online table read for audio drama. They're out there. You just got to search in some of those groups, but Facebook and Discord, um, there's usually people doing it. I practice there all the time. Sometimes we do feedback on scripts and sometimes it's just to, just for a little fun. And it's really interesting to see the way people interpret scripts and write scripts <laughs> and everything. So yeah, definitely check those out. All righty. Uh, here's an interesting name. She shed critters from YouTube. That's it. her YouTube name. She put her name elsewhere. I'll oh, find it. Oh, okay. <laughs> all right. Then I know who this is. Uh, hi, I'd love to hear Christina's tips on starting an audio drama group with college students. We have our own radio station and this is the kind of work that'd be great. Would also love to know how to audition for you as well. Ha. Oh my God. Honestly, Gen Zers, get them involved in this right now. They love, you know, they're great for YouTube. They already have, um, most likely they've probably done their own YouTube videos. They know how to promote on social media too. <laughs> like they're great on social yeah. media. So get them involved as quickly as you can get the theater department, right? Because in audio drama, you get to have so much fun with monologues. You can't really do this in film. You can't really do this in a lot of other genres. There's still a fourth wall that you're kind of thinking of. It's just a bit different. I don't know what you would call it in audio drama, but you get to have fun with that. So get the theater team involved, find those actors, find the director um, from the that department or the filmmaking department. Um, you probably have great access to writers as well, English department, you know, you got it all. Um, and you can definitely build an entire strong team from there. And most likely, I think if you just search a few popular audio dramas uh, from either their favorite YouTubers or favorite um, TikTokers or whoever's relevant to them, they'll be on board, I'm sure, you know, you can, you can actually build an awesome rock star team and get them fans for audio drama for life. <laughs> that would be amazing. Yeah, get the Gen Zers. Right. They're great. Yeah. Now, how would someone audition for you? I mean, have you been auditioning people? I mean, you said you're, you know, you're looking at, at reels and stuff like that, but are you auditioning people for, like for specific roles or has, that, has it gotten to there yet? Well, I do have um, a few open roles because we do have to shoot the next few episodes for Venice Magic Shop. Um, what else? I have like a mean girl role. <laughs> if anyone wants to take on that, I do have a form and a form link in my Instagram. If you just want to, um, add your information there, um, to apply as well. I have, you know, Google forms are your best friend. <laughs> so I put one there. Yeah. Just click on my profile and you should see a form to, uh, add, submit, whether you're a composer or a sound designer, tech or actor. Love it. Yeah. Right. Um, Terry Briscoe asks, Hey, Christina, does everyone pretty much stick to the script or is there a lot of improv going on as well? It depends on the actor. I find it's always like one or two actors that will improv um, and some won't. Um, I've only had that happen once in Venice Magic Shop. It was actually Dan <laughs> who went off a little bit. And then I only had that happen one other time with The Last Magician where they, they did that as well. Um, I kind of like to see if an actor's interpreting a character, I kind of like to see what they do or what they have to say. Um, and if it works, it works. Cause I, you know, I also remember Robin Williams used to improv all the time and it would work. So if you're good at it, then I'll kind of let it slide. But if we're getting carried away and we're off schedule, you know, strict Capricorn me likes to be on schedule. So <laughs> <laughs> I will reel you back in and say, okay, uh, next scene. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it, dep- it depends on the actor, it depends on the scene, and it depends uh, what we're doing and if it works. It depends. Yeah, yeah. it just depends. It, you got to be flexible depends. when you do this, right? Right. Well, you didn't <laughs> yeah. stop it when I started doing it, so I, bl- I figured I was doing the right thing. But. It kind of worked a little bit now that I'm listening back. You know, it kind of worked. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> all right, we'll just leave it there. Uh, Jeff Holman <laughs> asks... How do you monetize this? Who Who buys buys this stuff? Well, you monetize it like you monetize anything. You solve a problem for people and they buy it, right? You solve a problem, you help them. Entertainment can, or lack of entertainment could be a problem for people to solve. Sometimes they just don't want to pay a lot for it. Um, My plan is to, I'm self-financing it through other investments that I have that are paying off very well right now. Um, Sandbox. Um, But, (laughs) uh, you know, 
it depends on it, it all depends on your business model how fast you want to grow how um what you want to pour money into do you want to make money for a better quality of life or do you want to make money to grow and make more episodes like you kind of have to decide that and then um i would say that's why i'm looking into gaming because there's a lot of money to be made in gaming versus like you know selling tiered prices on patreon and uh you know selling t-shirts like i wouldn't do something with low profit margins to me it just doesn't seem to make much sense so i'm going to hold out and try to build the gaming um but there's there's not one way to do it people do sponsors people do merch people people monetize chat rooms like mm. they do all kinds of things so uh you know i get facebook bonuses and instagram bonuses for posting reels so i mean <laughs> you never know uh it depends on what problem you solve for people and what you're willing to uh, how you're willing to do it that's going to make money and reach the right people. So, I would say the best thing to focus on is fans. Like give your fans that love, like, you know, and make a show that's uniquely for them. I don't care about awards anymore. I don't care about any of that. I just care about getting that email that says you made me laugh out loud in the middle of the workday or oh my god, I was driving and I got scared and I you know, like it just made me jump. <laughs> or we have one <laughs> scene where this guy's like a fake prophet and he's doing like this like monologue and his voice is super strong and it just like can make the walls shake and I want people to be like, I believe, you know, I, you want people to react <laughs> and just love you. Like you got to focus on that first before you're really going to bring in a lot of money. Um you got to find the fans, find out what they want, solve a problem, entertain them and then figure out, you know, what can you offer that they'll pay for? So, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, you get the question from Ann Grist. Yes, Ann Grist. Hi, uh, Christina. She says, uh, "Remember me from Brian Rose's class?" Yes, um, from Nashville, Tennessee. And I remember you and your horses. <laughs> <laughs> hey, how does a voice actor get into an audio drama? Talked about this a bit. Uh, this is so exciting. P.S. You look gorgeous. She Thank says. you, Ann. It's uh, good to see you. I I think it was 2020 when we last uh when when she took the course so you have a good memory um and i hope you're still going on with your podcast so yes i co-taught a podcasting course uh with london real um for probably for about three years and uh we taught people how to launch a podcast interview style podcast and um Anne is a very talented voiceover artist yes, and she is. yes she is and um i would say if you're going to get into audio drama find the watering hole find where all the audio drama people that are losing their minds going crazy like me <laughs> um where we ask questions to each other facebook groups uh discord chats go to those table reads and um follow them on social media engage in their comments and uh get on their radar so that way when you go and try to audition they kind of know that you're a fan or they know that you like their work and stuff and then um, a lot of these sarah golding who i mentioned before she has a newsletter called fiction podcast weekly and they list auditions as well. And I know I am buying some ads in there when I launch uh, Venice Magic Shop. So you definitely want to be like, you know, where they're, where the inside information is. And she's a great resource for that. Um, she, it's the Fiction Podcast Weekly Newsletter. She's really great with a lot of everything all about audio drama. And I learned so much from her. But yeah, um, Chris Gregory, who I mentioned earlier, who, who's the one who's I've learned everything from as well. <laughs> um, I've learned so much from him. Uh, he has sometimes open calls for actors as well. And a lot of um, uh, producers or people who are indie and creating like us will sometimes put posts for open calls. So just keep an eye out for that. But yeah, go to the watering hole, go where they are. Sometimes we go on those voice platforms, but not very much like Voice Bunny or 123 Voice Crafters or whatever. We just get so much spam. So we tend to stay off of those. So if you're paying for those platforms, uh, that might be something to think about. You probably would be good just engaging with your favorite podcasts. So. Excellent. Thank you for that note. <laughs> we need more people to say that. Yeah, really. That those are a waste we of get money and time. Bam. Oh, really? You guys pay? I thought we paid. No, no, no. no. We, we, we tell people to stop using oh. those platforms. Got off of yeah. those like 10 years ago. Yeah. 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 Anyway, George has a question here, so I'm going to ask it since it was my turn. Yeah. <laughs> Says, okay. Have you ventured into spatial audio, such as Atmos mixers? So, in other words, lots of you know the adding dim audio dimension to uh, to your sort of VR for audio. Yeah. Oh uh, no, actually, I haven't. Um, I can bar <laughs> I barely do my own sound <laughs> design, um, which I'm getting better at. But no, I haven't ventured in there. No. 
but okay, I cool. will check that out. Sounds like you need some help. Oh, well, I'm I'm yeah. new to it too. I I heard a Q, Q Code Media uh, podcast that was, I was, heard about it through something, and they were like, "You should take a listen to what this sounds like," and the sound design was amazing, absolutely yeah. amazing. But that's a whole another level of complexity that at, you know, you don't want to get into that unless someone lands in your lap who says, "This <laughs> is what I do, and I love what you do, and I want to do this for you." Otherwise, it's a it's a beast. It is a yeah. beast. Yeah. Uh, I, you'd be surprised the production quality that you can churn out. It's, it's better Absolutely. than you often think. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, I will say there are, yeah, Gimlet, same thing. I'm like, wow, how do they do this? <laughs> it's like watching yeah. a, a video on your phone versus a big screen camera, you know, big mm -hmm. screen movie. So, yeah. yes. Yeah, there's nothing to it. <laughs> if, if you know, piece if you know, piece of cake. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Douglas Voice Guy, you get this one. Okay. Uh, details without naming names, obviously. Uh, what are some of the things that you sent people home for? Uh, oh, just because I might have missed this. Uh, but uh, uh, was there anything that uh, you know? Just I guess it's a cautionary tale. Just how to how to be prepared and be great on 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 your sound set. It was just, it was, it, it had nothing to do with the sound. It had, it was purely attitude. You know, mm -hmm. the complaining from the beginning was a bit of a red flag. And, you know, it, it's such a long day when you do a shoot and especially you're straining your voice too. So, you know, it's, it's tiring for everybody because we had like an eight hour day. And even though he wasn't even going to be there the whole eight hours, first on you get on, you're complaining. Then you tell me you haven't even read the script. Uh, you don't even know anything about your character. Y you know, you're the reason why we have to do multiple takes because you're not prepared. We have a, a three take rule that we started <laughs> back with the last magician. <laughs> and yeah, and it's like come prepared and it was slowing up our day. And then just disrespectful to me mm. and to uh, you know, I felt like he was just being an overall problem. And I was like, I don't mm. care how talented you are, go home. And I said, you know what? We're good for the day. Your, your work is done here. I'll pay you out. Thank you. Good luck. Goodbye. <laughs> um, and I, I just, I, I just want to let you know, like, you cannot be disrespectful. I don't care how good you are. You will not be disrespectful <laughs> to anybody because I'm responsible for everybody's work environment too, as well. And yeah. um, I want it to be, I want you to come back. I want you to enjoy what you do. And I want you to focus on your character, what you came here for. Any kind of tension that makes everything weird is just awful. So yeah, the work ethic is super important and the work attitude. Yeah. So he had a part two and that was how are the recordings actually set up? Are they, these are online or do you always have people come physically into the studio? And what more can you tell us about gear? <laughs> Equipment, um, a little bit of both, right? <laughs> So if I if I see that you have good um, sound quality, then we can do it online through clean feed or whatever we're going to use to record. Um, but we do it together. Um, if someone only has a few lines or, you know, a, and they just can't make it, and they need to record remotely, then we can. Um, but I do love it when people come into the studio because first off we get content, <laughs> we get stuff for social media. Mm. Um, I get to meet them. I order tacos and catering. It's a great day. You know, it's fun. We go to Burbank. Um, I get to, with the last magician, it helped a lot to look each other in the eyes. And plus when you have a lot of mm. physical action, um, like we had a killing scene, you know, stabbing, choking, things like that. Wonderful stuff. Right. So <laughs> it helped to really be in that room. Now, if you're just doing a few lines and it's, um, it's not an action intensive climactic scene, then yeah, probably you can do it remotely. Um, but I also just loving love to be able to have stuff that we can post on Instagram, have stuff that we can post on TikTok so we can promote, promote, promote um, as well. So it, it depends on the role. It depends on uh, the actor. So. Um, Thank you. So, yeah. yeah. Well, Christina, I um, <laughs> I'm so excited that we had you on. This was we had a great audience participation tonight, and this is a fascinating subject. If they want to get a hold of you, where can they find you? <laughs> you can find me on Instagram at Christina with two A's Castaneda. Um, you can also uh, check me out Apple, Spotify, uh, the Savvy Creative Podcast. We have the Last Magician, and coming soon is Venice Magic Shop, starring. Dan Leonard as well. <laughs> and you can hear uh, all of our actors and talents. You will get to hear. It's our first time doing magical creatures like mermaids and uh, other fun uh, creatures as well. So uh, we'll be launching that very, very soon. Uh, so check us out, Apple, Spotify, iTunes, wherever you uh, listen to podcasts. 
Excellent. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for joining us tonight. This is this has been fabulous, and it's been a great education for for our viewers everywhere. So, good luck with that, and uh, we will see you again very soon. All right. Thank you for having me, guys. Welcome. Thank you. Bye, All everybody. Right. All right. All right. Well, George and I will be right back and wrap things up. Get ready for tech talk right after this. This is Bill Ratner, and you're enjoying Voice Over Body Shop with Dan Leonard and George Whittem. VOBS.TV In these modern times, every business needs a website. When you need a website for your voice acting business, there's only one place to go. Like the name says, VoiceActorWebsites.com Their experience in this niche webmaster market gives them the ability to quickly and easily get you from concept to live online in a much shorter time. When you contact VoiceActorWebsites.com their team of experts and designers really get to know you and what your needs are. They work with you to highlight what you do. Then they create an easily navigable website for your potential clients to get the big picture of who you are and how your voice is the one for them. Plus, VoiceActorWebsites.com has other great resources like their practice script library and other resources to help your voiceover career flourish. Don't try it yourself. Go with the pros. VoiceActorWebsites.com, where your VO website shouldn't be a pain in the you-know-what. It's that time of the show where we thank our lovely, wonderful, amazing sponsors, Source Elements, the creators of Source Connect, and a growing suite of audio production tools that allow producers to work remotely from their clients and their talent all over the world. And you'll hear so many new technologies coming out right now that work on web browsers and have these, you know, clever, cute names. I'm telling you, those are all great and they're used all the time for producing podcasts and stuff. But the jobs that actually are likely going to be paying you the big money are generally using things like, and specifically, Source Connect. Because it is a tool that allows the production to flow and run the way they are accustomed to. The audio flows from your mic over the internet straight into the timeline of Pro Tools and the engineer gets to work, edit, do takes. Uh, they get to pipe in direction from the, from the director, have the client listen in, make an edit, get approval. It all happens real time. And that's why Source Connect is part of a lot of the biggest and best paying productions. So, if you feel like you're ready to be playing at that level and you're seeing that word Source Connect pop up more and more often on scripts, it's time. Head over to source-elements.com and get yourself a 15-day free trial. And if you need help getting it set up, georgethe.tech slash SC, where I've got tutorials, tips, instructions, and services to get you up and running more easily. This is Bill Ratner, and you're enjoying Voice Over Body Shop with Dan Leonard and George Whittem. VOBS.TV. Well, another hour has gone by. Now, that was interesting. Talking no, to I know. We, we, I keep thinking, oh, we've talked to everybody in voiceover. We've talked nope. to, no, it's a <laughs> we whole other thing. And it's a whole new, uh, you know, thing that it's a, it's a genre of interest and it's gaining this momentum. And if you're not paying attention, it might pass you by and you could be the next big thing. Right. In that genre of voiceover. So yeah. I was able to jump into it. It was a lot of fun. I didn't know anything about sandbox. Boy, I'm really feeling my age. Oh God. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And and then there's discord, which my son I, Jacob I, is. I do actually make use of discord for a couple things, but the v sandbox VR, this is a physical thing. You yeah. physically go to a location. There's yeah. one in Woodland Hills mm -hmm. and you strap it on with your friends and you actually play in this virtual sandbox together i i was i knew nothing about it so oh, you better well, believe i'm going to be I, trying this i i i think that might be something we could have fun with <laughs> yeah anyway uh let's see here uh next week on this very show which we're about to do if you want to hang out live while we do it mm -hmm. because you can be interactive with it is tech talk number 78 believe it or don't that's right it's and, coming yeah and then the following week well, the, the missus and I are heading to France for 10 days, so All right. so we can't Maybe. do a show for a couple of weeks, but you know, this is uh, Tech Talk 78, this is episode 
228 a voiceover body shop. So if you miss something somewhere over the past five, six years, you can go back and find it. It's all there on our website and on the Facebook page. Just go back and, oh, that looks like an interesting topic or somebody interesting they talk to. Go check it out. So uh, plus, plus, we're also going to be running a, 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 an interview we did today, which is we're going to talk a little bit about on Tech Talk. So that, mm-hmm. that'll be really cool. Who are our donors of the week? Well, we've got several, but I'm going to take my opportunity. Oh, to you've plug got a something. coupon. You got a coupon code. I finally made a coupon code for VOBS <laughs> viewers. So if you're if you've been on the fence about doing a tech support session with George the Tech myself, um, now I'm offering you a discount. Finally, <laughs> you can use this coupon for your next service, and you will get twenty percent off whatever your next booking is, and that counts for webinars that we do live. And any bookings that you do through this through the website, booked, scheduled services. It doesn't work on the stacks and sound checks. It's technical. It's annoying. Sorry, but it works on the other stuff. So anyway, try that out. V O B S Fan Twenty Twenty Two is the coupon code. Thanks, right. Dan. Okay, right. Oh, and by the way, we'll be back live with our next show on May Twenty Third. May 23rd. Got May it. 23rd. Okay. Make sure you're, you're here for putting that. putting that in my calendar. Okay, right good. No. <laughs> uh, who are our donors of the week? Well, we'll start off with Robert Leadham. Stephen Chandler. Casey Clack. Jonathan Grant. Thomas Pinto. Shelly Avellino. Patty Gibbons. Rob Ryder. Greg Thomas. A Doctor Voice. Antland Productions. Thank and, you, Uncle Roy. Yes, sir. And Martha Kahn, our buddy. All righty. Hey, join our mailing list. That way you know what's going on. Because I got to send out more stuff on the mailing list. Uh, and you'll see who our next guest is and what we're doing. And if there's any special announcements, we'll throw it on there. We also need to thank our amazing sponsors Harlan Hogan's VoiceOver Essentials, VoiceOver Extra, Soros Elements, VOHeroes.com, VoiceActorWebsites.com, and, and JMC Demos. Demos. Our thanks to Jeff Holman in the chat room, getting all those questions to us. Thank you. Uh, Sue Merlino, another spectacular job at uh, directing this show. Thank you. Through all this craziness. And, of course, Lee Penny for just being Lee Penny. Oh, I mean, Lee what, Penny. What, what does he need to be doing other than be himself? Uh, well, that's going to do it for this segment of uh, VoiceOver Body Shop. Uh, again, stay tuned for Tech Talk if you're watching live. Because that's where the fun is. Uh, but, uh, you know, it's not an easy business. We're here to help you out with all the ins and out of the voiceover business, whether it be with you know other talents that are showing what they're doing and how it's done, or if it has to do with technical, you know, this is the place to come. Mm-hmm. In the meantime, the bottom line is, if it sounds good, it is good. I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver. Body Shop. Or VO. B.S. See you